What's going on, Jerome's? Happy 5th of July, getting back after it. And it, it always feels like uh, the 4th of July is the crux of the summer. I feel like everything builds up to that. That's the midpoint, and everything leads back into football. Woo! Let's go. Let's go. The rookie's back at uh, Vikings TCO Performance Center Bar and Grill on the 23rd. Let's go. It's coming up soon. But uh, until then, yeah, we, we got some time to fill. And the score has been filling up some time, and they've been ranking positions, uh, position groups around the league, and they just did the offensive line. Notably, you were thinking, all right, so where would the Minnesota Vikings end up? So they have Darius and O'Neal, you know, one of the best tackle duos in the league. But the interior offensive line with Ezra Bradbury, who just got re-signed, and rookie uh, second-year guy at Ingram, rookie last year, uh, some question marks there. So where would the, the Vikings end up? So uh, let's find out. Let's find out. This is from the score. Ready or not, here we go. Oh, by the way, this is bad for the Titans. So the Tennessee Titans are bottom for O-line. They're also bottom for receivers. Also, they should be bottom for quarterbacks, too, but... Mm. Uh, we're going down, down in the earlier. Actually, what was the category uh, at 32? Bottom tier, uh, the worst, the worst. Mm. Uh, then you got below average. And we keep rolling. Oh, yeah, the Bears. Uh, the whole thing that Justin Fields needs a really good protection, just like at Ohio State and weapons. But uh, Braxton, Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, Cody Whitehair, Nate Davis, Darnell Wright. Now, you know, Wright coming in as a rookie. You know, supplanting Borum, even though I, I thought Borum played okay, but Nate Davis coming in as a free agent. So, I mean, there's question marks. I, I, I think there are building blocks of a decent offensive line there. I've always been been a big fan of Cody Whitehair. I think Jenkins is settling in at guard, but you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see there. Uh, Bill, ooh, Bills? Yeah, I guess. Okay, that guy. Uh, Jets, hey, but don't worry, A-Ron a Rodgers, known mobile quarterback. But, I mean, you got AVT. Maybe Beckton will turn out. Who knows? Who knows in this spot? You got the Ageless Wonder Dwayne Brown in there, too. Uh, the Bucks. Ooh, I mean, the Bucks. Wait, hold on. Tristan Wirfs moving to left tackle? I don't know. I don't know, man. All right. It's news to me. Actually, it, it may happen. But uh, in the good enough category, you have the Giants. You have the Texans. You have the Seahawks. You Seahawks. I think the Seahawks would be a little bit higher. Anyways, uh, the Panthers, the Bengals as well. well Bengals? Um, yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Uh, Bengals, the Chargers, and they got the Vikings clocking in at 11. And you got Darissa, Ezra, Bradbury, Ed Ingram, Brian O'Neill. They spelled Blake Brandle's name wrong, but whatever. Uh, Brandle, uh, Sokol, Schlutman, uh, Chris Reed, and o Ole Udo uh, backing up or Brian O'Neill. This is what they wrote. Ed Ingram is likely the weakest link amongst uh, Minnesota starters, but is still a mauler in the run game at just 24 years old. Christian Darrisaw earned an elite 90.2 overall PFF grade and was flagged just twice last season. Darrisaw pairs of Brian O'Neill to form one of the league's best run-blocking duos. I just said that. Uh, but as you see, you know, the Vikings clocking in at 11, uh, they're under the, the good enough heading, but just so close, just so close. Borderline. Great. Borderline. Great. I mean, the Broncos are pretty good with bulls. Uh, you got powers, uh, coming over from the Ravens, uh, on a big money deal. Cushionberry is still doing the damn thing. Quinn Maynard's the pride of whitewater. Uh, McGlinchey, of course, uh, huge free agent signing and they did all this and, and then let go of, uh, Dalton Reisner. Crazy. Falcons. I mean, Falcons are legit up, to, uh, up front. Uh, you, you got Matthews. got Lindstrom uh, quickly becoming one of the best guards in the league. Caleb McGarry holding things down at the right tackle that resign. Niners, of course. Uh, you got Trent. You got Banks. Uh, you got um, Spencer Buford. You got McKivitz ho hopefully filling in at that right tackle spot uh, for McGlinchey. Greasy Graham Green Bay Packers now. To a degree, I think the Packers may be getting by on reputation here because, I mean, Bakhtiari hasn't been healthy in 17 years, seems like. Elton Jenkins uh, is one of my favorite offensive linemen in the league. I mean, the Vikings could have drafted him instead of Bradbury back in 2019, but not that I'm bitter. But I, I still think that you know, Jenkins is best suited as interior offensive lineman. They've been playing him at tackle a lot. Uh, Myers is fine. Runyon is fine. Uh, Yost Neiman, uh, the pride of Virginia Tech, is all up in there. Zach Tom from uh, Wake Forest is going to uh, get in there as well. So, I mean, would I put them as an elite offensive line? Probably not. Uh, it's, uh, well, everything is pending on Bakhtiari, right, and his health, but we'll see what happens. Cowboys, yeah, I, I think Cowboys are certainly getting by on legacy in this spot. Because, I mean, for a while, I mean, the Cowboys had uh, easily one of the best offensive lines in the game. But, you know, Tyron's aging out. 
Uh, Zach Martin is still elite, but he's starting to age out as well. Uh, Tyler Smith, the pride of Tulsa, last year's first round pick. Beadish, uh, the stupid Badgers, all up in there as well. Ooh, Chuma Adaga, former USC guy. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Matt Farniak. Uh, I. I want to know if he's related to Tom Farniak, who was uh, on the Vikings training camp squad back in the day. He was like a center out of Iowa State or something like that. Mm. Also, Terrence Steele sounds like an adult film star. Uh, Ravens. Uh, so it, it's always weird. It's like, are the Ravens offensive linemen great, or does Lamar Jackson and his mobility enhance things? It's, it's always a chicken or the egg situation. Because Orlando Brown Jr., I mean, he got paid from the... Ray, uh, he got paid uh, again, trade from the Ravens to the Chiefs and then eventually to the Bengals. But would you call him elite? I don't know. Yeah, but Stanley is in there. Uh, ben Cleveland, former Georgia guy, Linderbaum, uh, former Iowa uh, center, uh, Zeitler uh, getting paid. Morgan Moses all up in there as well. Oh, Daniel Flaley. Let's go. Former gopher. Come on. Uh, elite el top four. Got the Browns. Yes. I mean, uh, Willis, Betonio, uh, Ethan Posich. Not that we needed him. Or anything like that. Uh, Why Taylor, Jack Conklin. Yeah, that, that is pretty damn elite. Also, uh, great offensive line coach and Bill Callahan. Uh, Chiefs. So, it, it's amazing. The Chiefs let, let go of Orlando Brown Jr. And they just reload. So, the veteran Donovan Smith, Jumpin' Joe Thune, uh, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith. Uh, they got Humphrey and Trey Smith in the same draft. And I, I think, uh, I want to say it was second and sixth rounds. Yeah, because people are so concerned about Trey Smith and his... Uh, health issues coming out of Tennessee, but he was just a mauler, man. And then also for agent Juwan Taylor. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, Prince Tango Winogo. Hmm. Uh, Lions, yeah. I mean, the Lions are pretty damn set along the offensive line. Uh, Decker and Sewell around the outside. Jonah Jackson has turned into one of the better outside zone uh, guards in the league. Frank Ragnow, the pride of Chanhassen, uh, is holding things down. One of the best centers in the league. Uh, and Big V is in there as well. And then lastly, the, you got the Eagles, of course. Yeah, Milana and Johnson uh, uh, bookends. Dickerson is a stud. Uh, eventually, Dickerson's going to take over at center. Uh, well, actually, maybe Cameron Tom steps in. Uh, but you got Kelsey Cam. Uh, actually, no, maybe Cam Jurgen steps in. Eh, who, who knows? But I love Landon Dickerson in the draft, too. I, I was actually a big fan of Cam Jurgens as well, but no, yeah, is what it is. But, uh, you know, the Vikings are piecing together uh, a very competent offensive line. And frankly, a lot of the issues that stem from the Vikings O-line play last year where they gave up a career high of pressures and sacks to Kirk Cousins as well as uh, Dalvin Cook had a career low rushing yards is that injuries was a major issue there. Darisaw missed time twice with uh, with uh, concussions. Uh, Ezra was out. Uh, Bradbury obviously missed time with the back and O'Neal had that Achilles towards the end of the year. So knocking on all the wood if they stay healthy that chemistry and continuity and chris cooper getting his mitts on them for another full season i think the vikings offensive line could be one of the best in the league at, at, at minimum top third uh and also i think that you could consider them great and ed ingram did show some positive signs towards the end of the season he when he stopped stepping on kirk cousins foot uh bradbury was a top 10-ish center last year people forget that ezra uh, hopefully he can step up and derisaw is going to be derisaw and o'neill hopefully he's going to get back uh to where he wants to belong uh, before that achilles so i'm pretty bullish on the vikings offensive line uh moving forward and the score is as well but your thoughts are thoughts uh according to the score the vikings have a borderline elite offensive line fair enough why not borderline great whatever whatever uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts and their thoughts in the comment section below, subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull Production Volume.